Greetings from Tokyo, my dear, dear friends. This is Daisuke, and I very much hope that this video finds you well wherever you are in the world. And today I'd like to continue with the Q&A. And today, by my count, we are at Q&A Part 9. So I am now starting where I left off at that video where I asked for questions and I received a great number of them. So thank you very much to all of you who submitted your questions. And I last left off here, so let me pick it up again at the question that I received from Daryl Nobbs. So hello Daryl, I hope you're well. The Criterion Collection has a disappointing lack of animation. Which animated films would you most like to see in the collection and why? Okay, so that's an interesting question. So animation, uh, you know, animation is a very wide field, as you know. And so this could be anything. Uh, Japanese animation comes to mind for me almost immediately. But if I could mention some others, uh, just for the sake of this answer. Again, these are just examples of maybe filmmakers or works that I might uh, suggest might uh, be interesting to find in the Criterion Collection. Uh, for example, um, the, let's see, for example, uh, Brothers Quay, uh, Svankmeyer. Uh, I should mention also that Brothers Quay works, a number of them were actually featured. They weren't on Criterion Laserdiscs necessarily, but they were on Voyager Company Laserdiscs, and so that has a very direct connection with the Criterion Collection, as you may know. Um, I would also mention, for example, um, uh, uh, the, uh, the, the filmmaker uh, Rybczynski, uh, maybe also uh, uh, the works of, uh, oh yes, the works of Yuri Norstein, and uh, I think those would be really interesting to see in the Criterion Collection, maybe as a kind of collection or set. Um, also, uh, I'm a big fan of the animation of Nick Park and others. Um, and I suppose maybe if I could add, it's not really animation per se, but it does have an animation certain style to it. And in terms of its filmmaking, um, it, it's, I don't think it's usually classified as animation, although it could be. And this is the filmmaker Takashi Ito, I-T-O, uh, sometimes spelled I-T-O-H, but I've seen it mostly in English as I-T-O, Takashi Ito. And he's perhaps best known for a film he did, which is called Spacey, from the early 1980s, I think. And it is, uh, I'm a huge, huge admirer of the works of Takashi Ito. And so it would be really wonderful and cool if his works could emerge in the Criterion Collection. Uh, if you haven't seen Spacey, uh, I suggest you take a look at that film. Uh, try to track it down and, and watch it because it is a, a remarkable work. It, it's certainly not for everyone because it does have a certain kind of of a visual style such that it, it does, uh, if one is very sensitive to flashing lights and, and that sort of thing, it, it's probably not for you. But if you are okay with a film that has a lot of flashing lights and flashing images, then it's certainly worth a look, as well as his other works. Again, they aren't necessarily classified per se as ex animation. They're more of like experimental animation films, but uh, really, really uh, exciting stuff. One of my uh, favorite, favorite filmmakers, um, so that's Ito, but uh, anyway, uh, and th th these are just examples, of course, Daryl, but uh, once again, thank you very much for your question, and I hope you are well. Next is from uh, Ben Tura. So hello, Ben, and you ask, Daisuke, are you a baseball fan? Uh, unfortunately, no, uh, I'm not, uh, I, I don't follow baseball. My father did, but uh, it didn't rub off on me, so... I'm sorry to say I'm not a baseball fan, but thank you very much for your question. I really appreciate it. I hope you're well. Let's see. 
Next is Jordan Timmerman. So hello, Jordan. And you say, hopefully I'm not too late to ask, but I'm very curious about your opinions on Japanese cinema in the 70s. Okay. From my limited knowledge, I know that the 70s marked a great shift in filmmaking in Japan. There are movies like Throw Away Your Books, Rally in the Streets, which seem so different from the 50s and 60s of Japanese movies. Of course, other movies like Haosu and perhaps the Mecha Godzilla movies uh, also mark this shift. So, what are your thoughts on this, and do you have any recommendations from this time period?、Uh, yes, in fact, I think I might have mentioned this before, but if you are interested in some、uh, exploration of this particular period, might I suggest, for example, the works of Art Theater Guild, sometimes known under the, 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 uh, uh, the abbreviation、uh, ATG, so ATG Films. And I think ATG Films have Uh, some availability outside of Japan. Perhaps it's a little bit limited, but、uh, I would certainly recommend that.、Um, if you're also looking for a real great survey of this kind of cinema,、uh, this really exciting cinema, which you, I think, very、uh, appropriately describe as being a kind of shift from the, the sort of classical Japanese cinema from the, the 50s and the early 60s, I would suggest, for example, looking at the films of, of Oshima. Uh, Nagisa Oshima, so that's a really great source.、Um, also,、uh, Kaneto Shindo.、Uh, I don't know if, if a lot of his films are available outside of Japan, but he really has such a large filmography. It's really quite impressive.、Um, also, I would recommend Shinoda, the works of Shinoda. And you also mentioned、uh, the film,、uh, the, the Terayama film. And so, anything by Shuji Terayama. Is、uh, strongly, strongly recommended.、Uh, Arrow Academy also has a number of films that I think are worth checking out. For example,、uh, they're, they're quite,、uh, quite intense and very challenging in many places, but if you are interested in a certain kind of cinema that emerged from this period, I could suggest, for example, the Akio Ji Soji set from Arrow. I could also suggest the films of, Ki- of uh, Yoshida. Uh, he's uh, known, I think, as Kiju Yoshida. And so、uh, there are many films by him that are available.、Um, and、uh, Eros Plus Massacre is、uh, probably considered、uh, one of, if not his,、uh, his masterpiece. But、uh, there's that. I would also recommend perhaps,、um, oh gosh,、um, let's see.、Uh, so, well, I, I mentioned Susu Mahani, but Susu Mahani works are a little bit difficult to, I think, get outside of Japan, which is a shame. I hope his works be- get more popular.、Um, there's also、uh, filmmakers like Okamoto. Uh, Kihachi Okamoto, which is a、uh, filmmaker that has some、uh, exposure, in the, for instance, in the Criterion Collection, but there are many others. Also, Wakamatsu, Koji Wakamatsu, who is a very challenging filmmaker in the types of films that he makes,、uh, uh, very provocative, very difficult in a lot of places, and so they're certainly not for everyone. But、uh, those are some、uh, examples that I would uh, suggest uh, to look at. And perhaps of those, maybe the films that are, oh, I also mentioned Matsumoto. Uh, Toshio Matsumoto、uh, and his works are very, very key. And so, if you're looking for a, a really,、um, uh, I think,、uh, w- I mean, one of the key films, I think, is a really great, in, in many ways, it's a kind of entry point in this kind of cinema, but it, it, it's an entry point because it's such a representative work.、Uh, and it's also one of my favorite works from this period, which is called.、Um, Uh, Funeral Parade of Roses. So, if I know that it has、uh, a really good release or a number of good releases outside of Japan, and so if you're interested, I would,、uh, and if you haven't seen it yet, I would suggest watching a film like Funeral Parade of Roses, and that can、uh, lead to hopefully other films、uh, in your journey.、And、there are many others, there are many, many others, but those are, I think, good places to start.、Um, and anything by ATG or anything under the ATG label. It's certainly worth checking out、um, as a, a sort of example or sub genre of that. And also,、uh, I think, as I said, the, probably the films that are perhaps the most available outside of Japan would be the, the works of Oshima up through the, the early 1970s. And so,、uh, if you look at Oshima's works, I think that also can provide a great you know, kind of way, a kind of blueprint or a kind of, of,、uh, of map. 
that can hopefully lead to other places along the way, other films, other filmmakers along the way. Uh, but that is also great because uh, of uh, his sensibilities as a filmmaker and the real uh, variety and depth of the subject matter and uh, his wide-ranging skills. I mean, his films are, are very, very different from each other. Uh, and and uh, the subject matter is also very, very uh, key and very critical to this particular period. And they speak to a certain uh, social, political uh, aspects of this particular time. And so uh, I would suggest something like that. Um, and uh, uh, hopefully, uh, yeah, uh, there's so much to mention, but uh, hopefully that answers the question. I, I hope that does. But uh, anyway, my friend, thank you so much for the great answer, and I hope you are well. Uh, let's see. Whoops. And I just got lost. There we go. Okay. So, uh, next question is from our dear friend, Kubrick Lover, 1972. So, hello, my dear friend. I hope you're well. And let's see. Hey, Daisuke. Sorry for being late to the party. I thought of some questions that I don't know if you have answered in previous videos, so my apologies in advance. No problem at all, my friend. Thank you for asking the questions. Number one, what do you think are the most disgusting movies ever made? Would you watch them ever again? Okay, um, I guess this really depends on what the word disgusting means. And I think it can have a, a number of meanings. Um, it really depends. I think uh, there can be a kind of, of uh, repulsiveness inherent in the type of imagery that's being employed. Um, it doesn't necessarily automatically reflect directly in the subject matter itself or the way in which I would consider the subject matter to be. In other words, just because I might consider something disgusting doesn't automatically mean that I dislike the film. It could mean that, but it, it doesn't automatically mean that. And so uh, it, it does, I just want to make that point clear. So uh, disgusting film, and also disgusting is, I think, in the eye of the beholder. And also it really depends on on, on what is being shown uh, versus what is being implied. Or, um, and because I think uh, a, a film that's often maybe referred to in this kind of conversation is uh, something like Pasolini's Salo. And uh, I, think, uh, I think for good reason on the one hand, but uh, if I've spoken about the film Salo in a video on this channel, uh, some time back, and I mentioned this, I believe, in that video, but uh, Salo, I think, is in terms of an actual filmmaking style, if you look at the, what is actually being shown on screen, there are some really uh, disturbing bits in that film, of course, don't get me wrong, but there are also, uh, there. it's not like, well, how should I put it, a lot of it is also left up to the minds of the viewers. In other words, there are things that are uh, off screen, that are uh, suggested rather than actually shown. And so it's, uh, it's what's being conjured up in the minds of the viewers that I think is really quite shocking. And so I mean, what, is that a disgusting movie? I mean, I really think that in terms of the actual sort of special effects that are shown, um, it, it can be argued, I think, r rather reasonably that it is not the most uh, outwardly or it doesn't show the most disgusting scenes, but rather it, sh it uh, suggests uh, very uh, disgusting or disturbing concepts while using uh, some imagery that is uh, undoubtedly very disturbing and disgusting, don't get me wrong, but um, I, it's, it's very, how should I put it, it there is a, a mix of, of what's being shown versus what is being conjured up in the mind. And so uh, I think it really depends on, on that, sort of, uh, that sort of approach. Um, I think, uh, you know, I've, I've uh, I, uh, uh, how should I put it? And, it, and you ask, would I, would you ever watch them again? It really depends on the subject matter. I mean, I'll stick with the, the, the example of Salo, which I bring up. And as I say, I've discussed it before. I, I've, I've seen this film a number of times and I really, uh, I, I find it to be a very powerful work. And it's certainly not for everyone. And I don't recommend it for everyone. Uh, but if I'm talking about my own personal cinema journey, I think it is. Uh, it's saying a lot. Um, it is. Uh, it's. It's very. Uh, uh, I think it's very nuanced, and also, it does have a lot of ambiguity to it. I think much more ambiguity than might be uh, often discussed. I think, um, and so, and I really admire the film for that. And so, I do. I see that film at, uh, a number of times. Yes, I do. 
and I, I think it's quite important. I think it's it's uh, there are many aspects of it that are uh, uh, quite funny, um, but even the comedy uh, they have a, a real uh, sinister sting to them. Let me put it that way. Uh, that makes the film uh, very, very effective, and it, it hasn't lost any of its power um, over the years, I think. And I think that's shown in part uh, by the, the sort of notoriety that it's gained uh, over the many years. So, uh, But anyway, there's that film. And, uh, and let's go on to the, your second question, which is, do you feel that films like Salo are important? I do, even though they are hard to watch. Yes, I think I... I do. I, I've uh, I've mentioned this before in the video, but um, I, I I do have uh, great respect for the film, and I think they are very important. Are they for everyone? No, but uh, for, for importance for me, yes, I do feel that. And then your third question is: Have you seen a Serbian film? Uh, yes, I have. And Cannibal Holocaust? Yes, I have. Multiple Maniacs? Yes, I have. Or Pink Flamingo? So yes, I have. I've seen those. And yeah, I, I, I haven't spoken about them, although I would love the opportunity to talk on this channel one day, for example, about John Waters' works. Um, I'm a, a great admirer of his works. And uh, in, uh, for example, the, the two works that you cite right here. And uh, hopefully one day I can try to talk a little bit more about John Waters. I know if John Waters has been uh, subject to some questions that have been uh, posed to me uh, occasionally uh, over the course of this channel so um, but uh, I'm I think there's a lot there and there is so much satire and uh, so much uh, almost a kind of level of social commentary uh, by the very fact of their existence and I, I find those films therefore to to be saying so much um, and uh, really serving a real uh, s uh, purpose uh, that is, I think, undeniable. But uh, I'll, I'll hold my comments for maybe a future video on the works of John Waters if I ever get that opportunity. But anyway, Cooper Glover, 1970, thank you so much for your questions, and I hope you're well. Next question is Alan. Alan, our dear friend Alan again. So Daisuke, do you have film viewing rituals when you are not watching films with the family? When you're watching alone, do you have a drink, soda, juice, alcohol? Favorite film, snack foods, if any, comfortable clothing, etc. Oh, that's a very interesting question. So, um, do I have any rituals per se? Not really. Um, if I'm hungry or thirsty, I will try to have a bite to eat beforehand because I usually, I usually try not to eat or drink anything during a film. Um, or maybe I'll have a bottle of water or some tea or something like that. But I'll try not to eat or drink anything. And that's only because I usually don't want to be surprised. Or, or how should I put it? If I am surprised by a film, I don't want to be in the position where, uh, depending on the nature of the surprise, I might, for example, regret having eaten something prior to have seen the film, if you know what I mean. And so sometimes films can surprise one. And so I, I'd usually try to avoid uh, eating anything during the film, um, but uh, uh, that's that's not a hard rule for me. But it's something I, I usually try to do. As far as comfortable clothing is concerned, yeah, I, I mean it's usually when I'm at home. It's late at night when everyone is asleep, and so I will be wearing a very comfortable uh, clothing. Sometimes it'll be maybe pajamas or something that I'll be wearing uh, that I can uh, just uh, then go to bed and sleep. Uh, so it'll be very comfortable. So nothing, uh, how should I put it? There's, I'm not wearing a suit and tie when I watch a film, for example. So uh, there's that. Um, and are there any other rituals? Um, let's see. I... Um, I don't turn off the lights or anything like that. Uh, I don't watch a film in complete darkness. Um, but uh, I'll try to turn the lights down to a certain degree anyway. Uh, but I think that's pretty much it. Uh, I, I usually try to make preparations in advance so as to avoid any interruptions along the way so I'll, of course I'll I'll use the restroom beforehand and I'll, I'll try to get as I say um, some food uh, beforehand uh, or have a drink uh, maybe have a, a water or something like that nearby beforehand 
or during the the, sh the the film and so I don't have to necessarily stop the film halfway of course if I have to then it's it's unavoidable and I will do so but usually I'll try to set it up such that I don't have to stop the film during the uh, during the play so uh, that's usually what I'm I I don't have any rituals, but that's usually why I, I do what it is I do usually. It doesn't work all the time, but it, it, I do my best. So, But a great question, my friend. Thank you very much. Uh, next is Mark Dugan. Hello, Mark. And you say, hello, Daisuke. I'd already asked this question on the first of your Q&A videos, but wasn't sure if you wanted the questions to specifically be comments on this particular video. So apologize if you've already read my other comment. Yes, I did. So thank you very much for leaving that comment. But also thank you very much for your consideration for leaving it here as well. So thank you. It's, it's, um, uh, it's, it's, uh, uh, it's, it's a little bit... Um, uh, easier for me to uh, have all the, the questions uh, gathered in one spot so I can just focus in on the one spot so um, uh, but thank you so much for for your consideration I really appreciate it uh, and number one you said you've shown a great love of the Godzilla films do you have any other favorite kaiju films or shows I noticed zone fighter on yourself there uh, so yes, I think maybe during that video I had Zone Fighter, the DVD, or one of the DVDs that were released in Japan. I think there were five in total. Uh, so that's a really good series. I don't think that's been released in a commercially available DVD or Blu-ray in outside of Japan, uh, Japan for example. Um, but uh, it's it really should be. I was actually hoping that maybe some of those episodes might have been released as supplements on the, the that Criterion Godzilla set, uh, but. Uh, oh well, c'est la vie, I suppose. Uh, but uh, you ask, uh, do you have any other favorite kaiju films or shows? Uh, uh, Gamera. And so I, I look forward with great anticipation to the Arrow Gamera set. And when, when it comes in, uh, hopefully I'll try to set up something on this channel talking about that set. And then if you say, if I could ask another question, do you have a favorite Kon Ichikawa film? Oh, great, Kon Ichikawa. Yes, there's so many great works by Ichikawa, of course. Um, Fires on the Plain, Burmese Harp. I, I might have mentioned those in my uh, response to you in that comment. Um, um, let's see. Uh, 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 Being Two Isn't Easy. Um, the, the Wanderers. Um, and uh, uh, films of that nature, Tokyo Olympiad, of course, An Actor's Revenge. Uh, I think my favorite, oh gosh, there, I can't really pick a favorite, uh, one favorite, but I had to pick uh, a number of favorites, or among my favorites might be probably uh, Kinda, you know, the Kindaichi uh, films that Konichikawa did. And in particular, it's like a, kind of like a detective mystery thrillers type. Uh, I think probably the most famous and a really fun and scary one is, I think the English title is The Inugami Family. Uh, Inugami, The Inugami Family. I'm not sure if it's, uh, and he actually remade it again um, uh, later on in his career. Uh, but that film, uh, and the remake too, uh, the remake is, is not, it's, it's pretty good, but the original is is excellent and very scary uh, even now and, and very funny in, in a lot of places. So uh, that could be among my favorites. But uh, uh, anyway, thank you so much for your uh, great questions and I hope you are well. Okay, my friends, so that's it for now. And I will pick it up again at the next video. Uh, so thank you very much for your questions, and until we meet again, please be happy and healthy and well, and please keep on watching a lot of great, great movies, and take very good care of yourselves during these times. Thank you once again, my friends, and cheers.